Fasting and testosterone, is it something you should be concerned about? In this video, we're gonna address some of the considerations and research based upon human clinical studies that I think you might wanna be aware of and a way to conceptually think through this should you be concerned about hormonal changes in prolonged fasting. It's Mike Mutzel here. This is High Intensity Health. Very grateful and honored that you are here. If you enjoyed this video, you can hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, I do follow those below. And if you're not yet subscribed, I'd be honored if you would subscribe because that way you'll get updated when we launch new videos like this or when we interview experts in the field like Dr. Peter Atia, Ken Berry, Paul Saladino, and many others. So let's get into the topic, talk about fasting and testosterone. So this was a study that was published a long time ago. Well, not that long ago, 1981. And so the study was a 10 day, so you need to understand the context. So 10 day fast, okay? Uh, there was 10 overweight men. So I just put 10 men here. 10 men fasted for 10 days. So the parameters of the study that you should be aware of is LH and FSH were monitored on day six, nine, and I think 10, and as well as testosterone. And what they found is that on day nine, okay, so day nine of fasting, which to be totally real with you, I don't generally recommend fast that long anyhow. But that being said, on day nine, uh, FSH and LH were reduced, so the pulsatile secretions, uh, and LH were reduced, as was testosterone. So let me get, get over here. I'll just put test for testosterone or we'll just put T. Everyone knows T for testosterone now. So after day nine, the hypothalamic pituitary hormones that are driving testosterone synthesis were reduced, as was testosterone itself. Now this is where the context comes in, guys, because certain people will see the study and say, see, fasting reduces testosterone, you should not fast. It's important to understand the context. This was after nine days of zero food intake, just water in men. So keep in mind, now the body has built-in compensation mechanisms. Think about it. What does testosterone do in men? Well, there's some basic maintenance metabolic functions uh, affecting the brain, bone mineral density and so forth, but by and large, testosterone is a reproductive hormone Reproduction is not going to happen in the absence of food, nine days without food. So the body has built-in mechanisms to compensate, reprioritize and redistribute energy for other more important tasks. For example, brain function, immune function, heart rate, liver function, things along those lines. And so testosterone took a nosedive. Now, I don't know the exact levels of where it went before and after, but it was statistically significantly reduced. That's the thing you need to understand. So that being said, is daily intermittent fasting or daily time-restricted feeding, is that going to statistically significantly reduce testosterone? Probably not, but again, you need to watch your symptoms. Morning erections, are you still able to perform in the bedroom? Do you still have libido? Do you still have drive? If those things take a nosedive, when you're embarking on your daily feeding and fasting patterns, you might need to adjust them. Is it normal to have a reduction in testosterone after seven or nine days fasting? I think that's totally normal. Again, the body's redistributing energy for higher priority tasks. So don't be totally concerned about that. It's to be expected, okay? So we just need to understand the context. Prolonged fasting affects hormones. Short-term fasting, probably if anything, it would improve hormone function because you're taking the burden off the body, helping to improve insulin sensitivity. So I just wanted to share this video with you to help you understand and think through this so that when you hear context on the internet and people say, well, this is why you should only do calorie res restriction and not worry about you know, intermittent fasting because it affects hormones. Well, we need to understand that this was after nine days and then they finally did 10 days and looked at hormone levels. And what they found is that the changes were really at the brain level. So it makes sense. The brain is the higher order mechanism by which all the other organ and tissue systems of the body are regulated. The absence of food is gonna change the hypothalamus pituitary communication to the gonads. Testosterone is gonna be reduced. So we always need to come back to why are we doing what we're doing? If you're embarking on intermittent fasting, okay, well, what's, and then what, is, what are your priorities? If you're trying to build muscle, become a bodybuilder, I don't generally recommend fasting. You can embark on time-restricted feeding, compressed feeding patterns, but again, if hypertrophy, if gain of mass is your goal and having really high testosterone levels is your goal, probably not gonna recommend prolonged fasting. Now, if you already you know, struggle and suffer with testosterone, your hypogonadal, is prolonged fasting gonna help you? Absolutely not. 
So again, this is how, why we need to think through these things, customize this to our goals and realize, have some basic relax, realistic expectations about why we're doing these things. So friends, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button. Definitely subscribe like we talked about earlier and I always follow the comments below. So if you have a, I would love to know your feedback. As a male, I'm curious about testosterone too. So I'd love to know like what you found in terms of feeding fasting windows, how those affect your hormone levels and uh, we can all learn from each other. So appreciate you tuning in. Hope you have an awesome day. Cheers guys.